Hello my friends. I'm going to share with you today how to make an axe handle for your Hudson Bay axe head. I'm going to show you how to select, cut, and fit the handle to the axe head. It's extremely important that the wood that you're using is very dry. This wood is a stave that I have had for cutting or making a bow and it has aged and seasoned in my barn for over a year so it's very dry. It's also a piece of hickory which is an ideal wood to be used for tool handles. I'm sketching the approximate shape of the handle that fits into the axe head and I'm following the grain of the wood. I'm shaping this blank into uh, flat surfaces so that I can use it uh, milling on my bandsaw to cut the uh, portrait of the handle. I'm going to leave about a quarter to a half inch extending out the top and I want to mark where the handle begins and right like that that's how we're going to want to finish and here is where the slot opens I'm going to go a slight arc back pretty close to the edge here. So this edge here comes pretty close to straight down. And as it comes down it makes a slight arch inward and I'm following the natural curve that's in this piece. The bottom terminates with the deer hoof. This will take the slight curve this way, and from up in here, it starts its way down, like into here. And these lines we can follow with the bandsaw to get us a a rough cut into the shape that we want. Pre-cutting your blank stock on the bandsaw quickens how fast you can convert this blank into the handle. It's cutting away a lot of material that would take a pretty good while chipping away with your axe or with your pen knife. When choosing your blank for your handle you want to choose a piece that is straight grained and void of any knots. A knot in the wood would make a weak point that could be a spot where it would break. You have to, <clears throat> when you're cutting like this, you have to watch the grain so that you don't rip off big long chips the way you don't want it to go. There's a term in woodworking, it's called riving, and what that means is you're splitting the wood and you, the split follows the grain of the wood. By doing this, it makes the wood extremely strong. What you rive wood when you make items such as bows so that when it's under extreme flexing, it doesn't break. Before we get too far along, we're going to start working this end. This is the critical end. If you don't make this fit, the rest of the handle is no good. Uh, it's aged over a year as a cut stave. So it's already real dry and shouldn't be any checking, shouldn't be any shrinkage. Now if you look here, I'm cutting this so that the uh, grain is running the length of, the longer length of the piece that's going to be extended into the handle. 
Now I'm going to work this down, but I'm going to try to keep this shoulder right in here a little bit thicker than what will fit inside the slot of the handle. I'm taking very small chopping action with this uh, carving axe and uh, I'll continue doing this until it gets more fine detailed and then I'll use my whittling knife. As I'm cutting this, I'm going to try to keep this point. This is only a rough estimate, a rough drawing, but I'm going to try to keep this point in the center line with the back of the handle. Using a pen knife is going to smooth out a lot of the uh, nicking action that the axe uh, chopping had done. It also gives you finer control uh, of the whittling action. I'm using a coarse grit sandpaper on my belt sander to uh, smooth out all the rough chopping nicks uh, in the whittling process. It's 120 grit. Right in here you can see it's slightly curling, so I'll sand in there, slight gap, I want it to go down just a tad more, then we're ready to set it. Eighty grit. <clears throat> when you drive a hammer head or axe head onto a handle, you always hit it down, that's why you like to have a flat on there rather than go to a point. If it's a point it's a good idea to just nick that off like like I did here. And to get this off and again any of these burrs I'll sand those. Those can lead to a check running. You need to cut a slot in the end of this handle to take a wooden wedge. Make sure this slot that you cut does not go below the hammer or axe head. After living on a boat for a couple years, I learned that I like to have a lanyard attached to all my tools. So never hurt on, on your Hudson Bay axe. Now I'm going to put the uh, axe head on and I'm going to secure it with this, this uh, wooden wedge and some steel wedges. And what I'm going to do is put some glue on here this is a waterproof glue so it's outdoor so if the axe head gets wet or axe gets wet that shouldn't shouldn't be uh, loosening because of the glue and I'm going to work this glue down into the slot and I'm also going to put glue on the wedge on both surfaces The wooden wedge that you use should be made out of a piece of hardwood. You can work the glue into this slot using a piece of paper or in my case I'm using a piece of sandpaper. Okay, now we want to secure this on. I'll drive that on with a mallet. Didn't have a mallet, but this will do.
I'll cut that off now. You can see here I have the birch wooden wedge running it the length of the the handle and that pressed real tight in this outward direction. Now what I want to do is stick a wedge, a steel wedge across this way and that will expand in this direction. I treat my wooden tool handles with pine tar, which is available on the internet. Now, what I like to do on my axe handles is coat them, or even hammer handles, coat them with pine tar. And this uh, pine tar, it's a product of uh, uh, distilling or heating up uh, pine wood and distilling that uh, sap that's in there, the resin, and it comes out as like an oil, or they call it the pine tar. Uh, pine tar has been used for hundreds of years uh, by the Scandinavians for their boats, and uh, it treats the wood and makes it waterproof. They also would put it on their organic or um, fiber ropes and it would make the ropes waterproof. The uh, pine tar also leaves somewhat of a sticky finish to the wood uh, and it's been common knowledge or used to be that uh, baseball players would coat their bat handles with pine tar so that they would have a firm grip on the bat. And I also want to make sure that I get it to go through my lanyard hole. I'll leave this set overnight and let it soak in and dry and then take a rag and wipe it down real well to remove any excess. The finished handle will be a very strong, durable handle, and it makes a very light backpacking axe. Here's a couple axes that I have finished, and uh, the smaller one is the same proportion as the larger Hudson Bay. Thanks for watching, my friends. Bye-bye.